For those of you that watch the BetUS College Football Show, you know that I bet on Penn State minus three and a half at Purdue on Thursday night. This is the recap and reaction show for that game, which, by the way, if you don't know, if you're watching this right now, uh, I do a, a show, the Bet U.S. College Football Show, but also with Winning Cures Everything on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We do a recap of the weekend that was, but this week there were so many games on Thursday night, I wanted to go ahead and hit a few of them, so I won't be covering this one on Sunday morning. I'll be hitting all the stuff that happened on Friday and Saturday night. So just so you know what is going on. Oh, by the way, the hat right here, you can get in the merch store. So go over to winningcureseverything.com. All right, anyway, I, I bet on Penn State. I bet on Sean Clifford. In a road game at Purdue, I had talked myself into this roster, etc. And late in this game, I was infuriated at what was going on. Uh, and then, of course, you see on here that, uh, I mean, you know what happened if you're watching this. You already know the, the recap and the reaction and all that, but this is... This is my reaction. But I was sitting there wondering why on earth I would do this to myself. And that is bet on Sean Clifford. <laughs> right Now, obviously, we won the bet. right? We, we got the Penn State cover by half a point. But it, it is infuriating to watch this team that you know is super talented. And the decisions that were made at quarterback and the decisions that were made just overall throughout the night I could not figure out a ton of this stuff. Uh, but Penn State finds a way to get the win. Uh, Kevon Lee, of course, gets that last touchdown from Sean Clifford. And Clifford looked like a completely different quarterback on that last drive. I mean, just uh, none of it made sense to me whatsoever. Uh, we'll move over to some of these numbers here. Y you look at it, and the win percentage or the win expectancy jumped back and forth. Uh, just so much. I mean, this was an incredibly exciting game. Uh, the EPA per play, uh, heavily in Purdue's favor as far as offense goes. I mean, just, I, I can't even begin to stress it. The the rushes for Penn State, how, how this offensive line cannot get any kind of a push is still mind-blowing to me with the talent that they have accrued. I just don't understand it. But, I mean, hey. Like, who, who knows? 104 yards rushing on 31 rushes here for, uh, for Penn State. Negative 5.26 EPA per play every time they ran the ball. When they threw the ball, 1.61 uh, EPA per play. Like, that's, that's a vast difference. Uh, and you see what, what Purdue was. 6.67 every time they threw the ball. Negative 3.6 every time they ran it. Uh, just a huge discrepancy here. Uh, I, I think... There were a ton of big plays that were made by the Penn State secondary in this game. Joey Porter was, I, I don't even know how to describe how well he played, how effective he was. Uh, I will tell you, for Purdue, yes, this was a pretty good showing for them. Uh, no, they didn't win the game, but they proved a lot of people wrong in that this scheme can be successful. Now, I will tell you this, if Jeff Brom had just run the football multiple times in that fourth quarter. I think they could have gotten out of here with the win. But that's not what his offense does. Like I did, Chris and I used to talk about this on the show all the time. His offense is throwing the football. That's what he's most comfortable with. That's what he has taught these players how to do. So, no, he's not going to run the ball much. And so, you got to find a way to run out the clock when you have a lead by throwing it. And that's kind of difficult to do. And while I do trust Aiden O'Connell, he is a fantastic quarterback. And no... Uh, the final numbers, when you look at it, 29 out of 58, uh, 356 yards and only one touchdown, the final numbers don't necessarily show it. But I, I do think he is one of the best quarterbacks in the Big Ten, probably the best one in the Big Ten West. Uh, and he had a chance to win this football game. And so, uh, But what I was going to say here is I, when you throw the football, Bear Bryant used to say this all the time, there's only three things that can happen and two of them are bad. Now, that's not necessarily the case because obviously you need explosivity in your offense these days in order to be able to be uh, competitive, right? You need to have big plays in order to generate points, and you're going to have to generate points with the way that the rules are set up to go against defenses. So, yeah, like, Braum is, is awesome, but, man, this, you got to find a way to close out a game like that, 
right? You had all the momentum in the world, and you give Sean Clifford another shot. Uh, and there was a graphic last night that said that he had done multiple uh, game-winning drives uh, in his career, and it makes sense. He's been there forever, right? I mean, this this all makes sense. But uh, but yeah, this this was a fun game. Not what I expected. I expected Penn State to kind of dominate this thing, and it looked like they were going to in the first half. That long touchdown pass at the end of the first half, I mean, what in the world? right? <laughs> like, what? what is Purdue doing? Uh, how did Penn State even get to that point? You know, that's what's so infuriating about Sean Clifford. And, and I'll tell you, when we get to the Penn State at Auburn game in Jordan-Hare, <laughs> I mean, it's you want to talk about voodoo magic going on uh these are two teams that have a bunch of it so i don't want to be anywhere near this place but regardless uh great showing from penn state uh the numbers you know not great overall but when you go and you look at you know all these different things about the uh, success rate and everything else uh, pretty evenly matched game uh penn state still found a way to to cover even with some of the stuff that went against them and it still looks like a pretty talented team to me. The fact that they were able to escape with a win there, this reminded me a lot of when Penn State went to uh, Kinnick Stadium, right, to face off against Iowa night game. Uh, Trace McSorley was the uh, the quarterback at that point, and they got out of there with the 21-17 to win. It's kind of the same situation again, right? It, it's You didn't look great for the whole game, but you get out of there with a win. And that's exactly what you got here. So I uh, I thought it was a great way to start off the season. Whew. Good gracious, what a great game. What a great game. I think both teams have things to be happy about. Things that you know that you can work on and fix, but it is the first game. First game. So I uh, I do feel pretty, pretty good about this first game here. Cheers to Penn State. Getting that cover. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.